Hi and welcome to All Things Data. I'm Lynn Langett and in today's screencast I'm going to show you some of the updates to the Amazon Web Service Elastic Beanstalk service. First a little bit about me. I work in a number of different cloud and big data technologies. Um, been recognized by Microsoft, Google, and TenGen for my community education work. I actually do a lot of deployments on the Amazon cloud and uh, I did used to work at Microsoft. So first of all, if you're not familiar with Elastic Beanstalk, it's Amazon's offering as platform as a service on their cloud. It is similar to Windows, Azure, Web, and Worker Roles and uh, applications. It supports several different languages. It supports Java, .NET, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby, because I'm assuming most of you will be Microsoft audience, I'm gonna show you .NET support. Also of note is the .NET version has an AWS toolkit for Visual Studio, which I'll also demonstrate. The basic concept of platform as a service is a higher level of infrastructure than you get as infrastructure as a service on the cloud. And what that means is that in addition to virtual machines, you get application management. So you create an application based on the vendor's guidelines, you upload it, and then you are able to perform management of that application and scaling using their infrastructure and tools. It's important to understand costs to test and try things out, and Amazon is very forthright on their site, saying that if you are a new customer, you can uh, use the amount of resources listed in this slide, which is a one micro instance on EC2, a load balancer, 15 gigabytes of data up and down, eight gigabytes of data storage, one gigabyte of metadata storage for one month, as part of their free tier for new customers. For existing customers, they estimate that would be about $35 a month to try it out. And this is what uh, the uh, icon looks like over on the console. That's Elastic Beanstalk. It's in the deployment and management section. So now we're going to switch over and I'm going to demonstrate and show you how to get set up with an application. So to get started, you would uh, create an Amazon account or sign in with your existing account and you would go to the main console and then you would click on Elastic Beanstalk. Now if you've previously looked at Elastic Beanstalk, there is a new management console and that's one of the reasons I'm making this screencast because I think it's much more usable and uh, functional. So you can see that I have created a Beanstalk application here. So it's, I've got a default environment running the sample application and I'll just go ahead and click on that and show you what it looks like. You can see, you quickly see the status of your application. This is running on Windows Server 2012 with IIS 8, and I can see some logging information. I can work with configuration around scaling, instances, notifications, and software configuration. I also have a network layer for load balancing and a data layer where I could incorporate RDS database or I could use an existing database. If I wanted to work with any of these, I would just click on the gear and then I could make some changes, for example, to the scaling. And this is what I was talking about with the platform as a service. In addition to this, I have logs. So I um, can log if I've turned logging on. This is the sample app, of course, so I don't have logging on. I have monitoring. And you can see I have a high-level dashboard here showing the latency, the request, CPU utilization, max in, max out. Then I have some charts and graphs over time where I can set alarms as well. And then I can configure this. So here's the alarm console, I didn't define any, and here's the event console. And I can you know, scale and look at my event log. If I wanna see the uh, default application, I just click right over here, and this just is the default uh, application. So if I go back to create new environment, you can see that I have the choice of the different platforms that I talked about. So if I select .NET, I'd go IIS, and then I would select um, whether I want to run on IIS 8, 64-bit uh, uh, Windows Server 2012, or I could go and I could uh, change versions and I could run on uh, 2008 if I needed that for my application compatibility. So I'll just select 8, and then I can select a load balancing auto scaling, or I can select a single instance if I'm just trying things out. And then I click continue, and then I can uh, use the sample application, or I can upload my own application. Now, of course, you're gonna read the developer documentation to figure out how to prepare an application, and where I suggest that you start is actually you download the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. And let me give you a preview of what that looks like in Visual Studio 2012. 
So here inside of Visual Studio 2012, I have downloaded that tool, and part of what you get is the AWS Explorer, and that's exposed on the View menu here. And then you configure your account and set it to the appropriate location, and you can see here I'm US East, and here I have the default environment for my first Beanstalk application, and I'm able to uh, work with that information that we just saw on the website inside of Visual Studio. So you can see I can connect to my instance, restart, different environments. It's basically the same settings coming through here. And again, same sort of menu here where I have the monitoring coming through in Visual Studio. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes and show you some of the new updates which make Elastic Beanstalk I think more usable and more interesting. I know I'm going to be trying it out. This is Lynn Langett for All Things Data. Have a great day.